a short film about the James River. It begins at the headwaters where we are going to begin this evening's program and uh, works its way down to uh, the tidal James River where we will conclude our conversation. I'd like to now introduce um, one of my favorite river enthusiasts, Rob Campbell. Uh, Rob, before you get started, I'd like to like for you to tell us where you're joining us from and your favorite paddle craft of choice when you're out on the James River. Oh, and first of all, thank you, Justin, for the introduction. And thank you so much for, for everybody that's joining us this, this evening. I'm actually coming to you from the, our Lynchburg office. It's housed right in Rivers Edge Park, uh, right across from downtown Lynchburg. I've got a beautiful cityscape uh, behind you. I was outside enjoying the view, but a thunderstorm started to roll up and it probably would have had added a little base to my presentation. So I decided to come inside. Um, but uh, definitely my favorite paddle craft of choice would probably be canoeing. Absolutely. That's my first love but really gotten into rafting a whole lot the la over the last few years and, and started to enjoy that too, to enjoy some of our, some of our higher grade waterways. Um, so, but anyway, um, we're starting our conversation in the Upper James and that film did an excellent job of kind of encapsulating what that actually, that first section of the James looks like. Uh, that first image that you saw as the drone was going up in the Y shape, that is the Iron Gate. That is where the two rivers, the Jackson and the uh, Cow Pasture come together to form uh, the James River. And that's really where the beauty begins. Uh, all that whole area up there is completely surrounded by mountains. As you start your trip down uh, out of Iron Gate, you're really in the, the foothills of the Alleghenies. And as you make your way through uh, the Valley of Virginia there, you with mountains all around, you make your way towards the Blue Ridge, uh, which makes that stretch of river a truly, truly special um, piece of water. Um, as uh, as our, uh, our graphic shows, it flows 64 miles uh, through uh, the heart of, of the western heart of Virginia. Uh, 59 miles of that is designated as Scenic River. Uh, we hope to have that last little portion uh, designated soon uh, because the entire stretch really is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, some of my more favorite runs are, are in and around the town of Buchanan. Um, and there is absolutely a great partner up there that we have in Twin River Outfitters uh, that can get folks out on the water up there any, and then lots of stretches of river. Not just that for one day, they have multiple campsite options that can get you out on the water. Uh, and really gets you a long experience on the Upper James without having to do a lot of the legwork. Let those guys take care of it. They're professionals and they know exactly what they're doing. And as we look at the map here, um, that's kind of uh, indicates the whole stretch of, of the uh, Upper James River Water Trail all the way from our Iron Gate area down to the very corner uh, of the, of the uh, graphic there with the town of Buchanan. Um, and as we can see, uh, this, this resource within the Upper James River Water Trail website uh, and all the brochures and sign work that's gone into it really is a special product to show many people from outside the area how special this area really is and can really help them plan their trips very effectively um, for their trip down uh, the James in this section of river. Um, also too, not to forget, you can see the Maury River coming in from the, uh, the right hand side of the image. Um, that's an excellent new addition to the Upper James River Water Trail just over the last few years that's been put in. Um, and another great, beautiful, beautiful river uh, sometimes at this time of year, it's a little tougher to float at lower, lower flows. Uh, but really everything other than that uh, in this section and on this map is paddleable just about 365 days a year. Um, whether you're brave enough to get out in some of the winter flows, I'm not sure about that. It can make for a pretty float, but absolutely all uh, late spring, summer, and early fall, just an absolute excellent place uh, uh, to, to recreate. And as you can kind of see on the map, some of the darker regions that are highlighted next to the river, those are some of our higher mountain ranges. And so as you're floating through, you can really see that there's not one spot uh, on this entire stretch where you're not either in a great mountain view with an excellent vista or not right, just right beside one altogether. Um, and so it's, it's a great, great section up there to see some beautiful Western Virginia beauty and also to see just a little bit of the uh, of, of some other natural beauty that's up there as well. Uh, we've got a, a natural bridge uh, that's uh, the newest addition to the Virginia State Park system, um, and they're glad to have that up there. We're so glad to have that resource and, the, uh, and have that being preserved and taken care of in all forms uh, so we can make sure that this great resource goes on further. Uh, some, some, some interesting and, and definitely uh, memorable Americans have crossed through here, uh, the likes of Thomas Jefferson and Washington uh, as they were surveying this part of the state and identified this as one of the natural wonders of the world in their opinion. And I think uh, in our watershed, we can certainly say one of the better and, and more magnificent natural wonders. So I do encourage you to go check that out as well. 
uh, because this region is awesome for river users. It's awesome for people who want to get by the water, but it's really great for anybody that's even just out for a scenic drive. Uh, you want to go on some interesting walking trails. Um, the areas in Clifton Forge have some amazing walking trails that have just started to pop out. And of course, here in the park at, at Natural Bridge, they have an amazing trail that walks up the, up the creek here with some, uh, not just a view of the bridge, but a, a great rec recreation of a Monacan village that's just up there um, and just is an absolutely beautiful place to see. Um, and last but not least, we have to mention Balcony Falls, which is uh, probably one of the uh, top sections of, of uh, whitewater on the James River. It doesn't quite rival Richmond, but it's, uh, it's a very good uh, section for locals here. And, and most folks, if you're a paddler in Virginia, you've either been to Balcony Falls or it's on your list to come. So it's one of the great, great runs here. And believe it or not, that is the stretch of river that is not designated as scenic river. Probably one of the most scenic stretches that we have up there, uh, but we're working to get there soon to hopefully get that rectified. But Again, another great place. It's a little bit higher skill level demanded here. Uh, there have been some incidences uh, over the past few years and some this year of people getting out uh, at, at too high water levels and also an improper craft. Uh, but we're actually hoping to work with some of the localities and actually Justin and some others have already started that process of trying to get some new signage up there to really help people understand the resource and to make sure that they're getting out at a time where it's safe to get out uh, so that they can have the best time absolutely possible. Um, but uh, with that, I'm actually going to try and save some time. Uh, I just want to say it's not one spot on the whole Upper James that's beautiful. It's the entire thing. So if you pick anything up there, you really can't go wrong. Um, so uh, with that, I'll, I'll let us move on to the next section. Um, and we'll have some questions here coming up uh, soon. Great. Um, <laughs> thank you yes. for that overview of, of the Upper James. And, and like Rob said, the Upper James River Water Trail is it's a, a, a special section of, of James River and if you're a paddler or an angler um, or, or enjoy multi-day river expeditions um, go explore the Upper James um, it's, it's wonderful very scenic um, and it's a, it's a good place to get away um, you know from uh, population centers in the watershed uh, we are working our way down river now we are uh, moving on to the middle James River and again, I will uh, turn it back over to Rob, uh, who is uh, based in, based at River Edge Park, uh, is coming to us live from River Edge Park. And uh, Rob, tell us about the Middle James River. Absolutely, yeah, and thank you, Justin. And we're, we're specifically located here at Lynchburg, and it's, it's not only a great urban center here in the western part of the state, but it's actually at the cusp of what we would identify as the Upper James and the Middle James. Uh, so we are, we're here at River's Edge Park, the first boat launch on the Middle James that can send you all the way down to Richmond, uh, 140 some miles before we run into our first impediment in the James. Uh, and it's really a long and beautiful stretch of river. Before I go too far, for those of you who are motorboat enthusiasts and people who like to get out on the water in some motorized craft, before we go too far, we should talk about the section just between he, uh, the upper and the middle. And that's the Monacan Park section. You might've heard Kimball Payne alluding to, alluding to earlier. Uh, and also some other sections near Big Island. Great small sections of river to take a motorboat out and uh, get to catch some good fish, maybe do a little bit of water skiing if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, but worth taking note that that is right there jammed in the middle uh, of, the t of the upper and the middle. Uh, but as we start um, uh, below, the, that, and, uh, below the seven dams, uh, we have free flowing river all the way to Richmond. Um, every year we do something called the Bateau Festival. A few of you all may have heard of that. It's a recreation of the historical transport of goods up and down the James River uh, in a craft that was uh, actually, I take pride in this, was, was modified and recreated here in my home uh, county of Amherst County by a couple brothers named the Rucker Brothers. Uh, and every year we recreate the, the journeys that those gentlemen used to take down the river, taking lots of goods and, and, and things from this part of the world down to Richmond to market for you all uh, to enjoy. Um, but it's an excellent, excellent festival. And uh, uh, Bill Street, our CEO here, has joined us for a few days on it last year. We didn't quite get him this year, but hopefully we'll get him for next year. Um, and, and can tell you how just truly uh, incredible that experience actually is. Um, and we hope to actually very soon have our, our bateau that we own up and running to give people tours right here in front of downtown Lynchburg uh, to get people out on the water and actually experience a bateau for a very short window of time. But an experience that not many people had had in the past that we hope to open up to a lot more folks. Um, so it's an excellent, uh, excellent resource there. But really the, the Bateau Trail that we use uh, to go down there really highlights the trail of the James River uh, going down that we use for accessing for canoes and kayaks and any other really trips that we take down. 
we, we recreate those trips more often than, than people even know, just by getting out and running some of these sections uh, of river from these traditional spots. Uh, the, one of the first spots that you'd come to if you're floating down river uh, out of Lynchburg is James River State Park. Um, and that's uh, located just above Wingina. This map is a little old and hard to see, but James River State Park is between Bacon Creek uh, and Wingina. They have some absolutely excellent accommodations. We've had some staff outings there. They have a number of cabins. They have certainly primitive camping, but they have walking trails and horse riding trails and everything that you could possibly want to do um, right there on the banks of the James River. And they have a small tubing livery also uh, where they do tubing uh, and canoeing and kayaking as well at their facilities there. Uh, but as we move on downstream, you can see the numbered takeouts. Uh, those are the days of the Bateau Festival as we move downstream. Um, and those are, are the legs of the, anyway. Uh, now those are really our hot spots. You can see those are where the highways are crossing the river. Uh, but one thing that's not well depicted on this map are the beautiful islands that are really in between most of these stretches, at least between Lynchburg and Scottsville. Oh, excuse me, Lynchburg and Cartersville. Um, that, uh, that stretch really does encompass uh, the antithesis of what the Middle James really is. Not extremely wide like it is quite in Richmond yet, but lots of islands, lots of wildlife, everything from eagles to the wild blue herons and otters and the like, all, all of which we have in the Middle James as well as the Upper James. I forgot to mention that wildlife factor. Uh, but all of those, it's just a spectacular view of a beautiful environment. And what these runs will allow is you a, a nice day run from each one of these spots to the other is about a 10 to 12 mile trip. Some are a hair longer, uh, but that would, uh, would really give you a nice full day on the water. Pack some, pack some water, pack your sunscreen, and, and also uh, a lunch, and you'll have a great afternoon for sure. Maybe a few cocktails as well, uh, if, if done responsibly. Um, but at, uh, also, as we move downstream from Scottsville, uh, we get to Bigger River as we go, and we make our way down to Columbia and some of our bigger tributaries with the Ravana coming from Charlottesville, uh, some of the hardware as well coming in, and as well as the Slate River, um, which are also some very excellent resources as well. Um, uh, they, they really start to widen the river out quite a bit. Um, you start to see less and less islands and, and more and more wide channels moving through. Uh, the river changes completely in this section. Um, uh, and just above that, I should, I should mention, just below Scottsville is one of my favorite sections on the entire James River. That's the Seven Islands section. I do hope that one of you all at some point will paddle or get yourself through that section at some point. Uh, absolutely gorgeous, stunning. It's called Seven Islands. It's more like 70 islands. It may be, may be 700 small islands. It's, it's a very, very special section of the river. And then after that point, that's, that's really after where our, our uh, our island section stops. That's where the river really starts to change and make its way to what you all may be more familiar with in the Richmond area. Big, wide, and flat, um, and coming down uh, and with a lot of forest draining all of this big watershed that we've talked about up until this point. Um, so uh, a few uh, outfitters uh, for river recreation. Of course, we're kind of the toehold here at the top of the, of the Middle James with James River Adventures doing canoeing, kayaking, and uh, stand-up paddleboarding at the moment. Uh, with hopefully a bateau option coming on in mere weeks. James River State Park, as I had mentioned, the town of Scottsville has uh, reeling and rafting. Uh, just up river from there is James River Runners. Um, also, uh, Powhatan State Park is, is in that lower section um, between uh, as you're approaching Maidens. Uh, and they actually have a livery there now as well, or that operates out of that area too. And I'm not quite familiar with the name uh, as they're, they're new to the game this year. Um, but uh, just a lot of good options to really get out and enjoy this big stretch of river. Another good stretch of river for multi-day trips, especially if you're the type that can pack some stuff on your canoe. There are a plethora of beautiful, wonderful islands to camp your way through as you go down. Um, and and in, in spattering and spots, we have some good walking areas here at the River's Edge Park. If you're not so much get, wanting to get on the water, we have some good trails, linear trails that run along the water for walkers or people who may not uh, be uh, capable to get out on the water. And two in the city of Lynchburg, they also have a great trail network that spans out to Percival's Island and gets you a little closer to the river on that side. Uh, and as you go through the towns of Scottsville uh, and other little spots there, there are some riverfront parks that are very, very special and just easy to drive up to, get a good little feel of what the James is like. Maybe go stick your toe in the water um, and and then see it from even just a car on a cruise. So. Um, I do hope uh, that, uh, that you guys got a little bit out of this for sure. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys, and I look forward to answering uh, any questions that you guys may have at the end of this. But I will save uh, what time we have left for my colleagues to go ahead and tell us about the other special sections of the James. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a great overview of the Middle James River. And, um, you know, it, it's a long section of river. Um, 
you know, approximately 140 miles between Lynchburg and Richmond. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot to do. Uh, and Rob covered a lot of those activities. Uh, so we're moving further down river and uh, I'm excited uh, that we have Greg Belzey with us this evening. Greg Belzey, um, if you're from Richmond and you're a river enthusiast, you probably known, know him or have crossed paths with him. I actually learned to whitewater kayak um, from him years ago, and uh, it, it is such a treat to have you tonight, Greg. I will turn it over to you to talk about the falls of the James River. Well, Justin, thank you. Thank you so much, and to all of JRA, um, thank you for the invite to be here. Uh, this, this is my passion, and, and I, I love this picture that, that is right here because it is my family's passion. That is uh, my son just this last Monday. Uh, enjoying the river on one of these super hot days, um, just, just right in the middle of the central business district. Um, and and the, the treat is that the river is clean enough to play in. And a lot of that is due to James, the James River Association's efforts over the decades. So, so thank you for that. Uh, that's, that's really the treat. Um, you know, Richmond has so much to offer. You have Middle James right above Richmond. You have Boucher's Dam, the first impediment from Lynchburg that uh, Rob was alluding to. Um, after that, the river, as it states right here, drops over 100 feet uh, just in the stretch of Richmond, which makes things pretty exciting. But with that, you have the opportunity to explore and find your own little niche. We have the nice calm water areas, or you know, we do have the rapids too. Um, it, it's such a special river that it was, this stretch was designated as a state scenic river um, section back in the 70s. Uh, Justin sits on the advisory committee, uh, as, as, do, as do I, um, to oversee that. And it's been a very active um, committee. And that's, that's one thing, being in an urban center, you have such an influx of people coming in. What we're trying to do now, though, is, is spread everybody out. If you come to Richmond, you go to the river, there's 2 million visitors a year. A ton of people, because they've finally realized how special it is. We are so incredibly spoiled here in town, but we've overdone it, right? So what I want to speak to a little bit is how to, you know, find some of those other areas to, to visit here in Richmond. Find your, find your little, little niche. Uh, in Richmond, we have the James River Park System. It's run by the city of Richmond. Uh, perfect map right there. So from Boucher's Dam all the way down to Ankara's Landing, which is opposite Rocket's Landing. Uh, it's only uh, approximately 10 miles, uh, the last mile or so being tidal, uh, but uh, there's so much packed in there. But how do we how do we manage that? That's getting to be a little bit of an issue. Again, the problem is, <laughs> it's love because the water is clean. We can now go to it. 10 years ago, we were trying to convince people that it was okay. JRA has helped on that. Uh, some of the areas that are quite popular, Belle Isle, the Pony Pasture, uh, the dry rocks um, down by Belle Isle. These places just get inundated. Uh, it's fun to check them out during the weekday, um, not on a 100 degree day probably, because it gets a little toasty on the rocks down there. Uh, but, but yeah, want to check that, those areas out. But what I'd like to speak to is some of the other areas, some of the lesser known areas to go into and, and explore and the beauty about this area is you can really truly get lost and not realize you are in a major urban setting. So in between Richmond, Chesterfield, and Henrico counties, it's over a million people right there. So tons of people, where to go? So at the Huguenot Flatwater Stretch, you can paddle upstream to Boucher's Dam. Uh, I find that fascinating because not many people are going to go up there. And then also you have the, the fishway that or the fish ladder that was built uh, with a lot of help from JRA. And it really is a technological marvel. If you understand how it works and investigate it a little bit, it's really spectacular how it was designed. And you can get right out of your craft right there and look down into it, see how it works. In the spring, when the shad are running, there's actually a shad cam. There's a little panel of plexiglass down in the water and you can watch the shad go by. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. But you can go up there and check it out and not many people get up there. Um, so that's that's a great area to go. From the Huguenot Flatwater area, heading downstream to the backside of Williams Island. Uh, it's about a mile downstream. It's such a remote area down there. Uh, it sort of backs up to where H. Croft Hall is on the, uh, 
on the Windsor Farms area, but not many people actually explore around that side of the island. So you're just, you're, you're surrounded by wilderness and yet you're within the city limits. So that's again, a neat, neat place to go. And it's slow water back behind there. You're not gonna get into the rapids. There is a dam at the end of that stretch that you can carry around. It's a fairly easy portage trail in that area. It's on the river right of that side of the river. Uh, fantastic place to just go and explore. And again, we are so spoiled with convenience. And really that is the bottom line here in Richmond. Every, the river is so convenient and that's, what I tell people when we're doing classes in Chesterfield, I've been there for about 25 years teaching, um, is we want to get people to enjoy and appreciate and help take care of what we have because we are so incredibly spoiled by what we have. Uh, then working on downstream, uh, you, you have Pony Pasture Park. Again, that gets a little bit crazy just with everybody wanting to go there. I remember as a little kid, somebody had graffitied, painted on one of the rocks, a very professional stencil said, public swimming hole and they had the stick figure and everything. It looked like it was a professional stencil, stencil because everybody did go there. It seemed like it was the public swimming area, but you might not want to go there on a weekend. Um, but down at the pump house, these pictures on the screen right here, uh, Chesterfield, we have worked out an agreement with the Department of Public Utilities in Richmond who own or operate this waterway that we could take kayaks into the canal and provide trips. So we can paddle up the canal from the pump house and it's, it's really a variety of flora and fauna. Any time of year you go up there, you find different plants blooming. Uh, two weeks ago we we're out there, you know, there was an immature bald eagle flew right at our head level and then spooked a fawn out of a tiny little spit of grass. It was right in the middle of the canal in that one particular area. Who would have figured? Who would have thought? But it's really, again, look at those pictures. You can't imagine that you are, again, right in the middle of the city. So that's, that's always a fun thing to do. And I think Department of Public Utilities has gotten used to us paddling enough that a couple you know individuals are starting to foray in and it's been okay, um, at least up to the water treatment plant by the Poe White. Uh, everybody who has gone up there on their own that I've heard about is saying they have not run into any problems. They haven't um, gotten stern looks from uh, the security up at the water treatment plant. Everything seems to be going well. So. We're hoping that we have broken ground, that this is a public place to paddle now. Um, so that's, that's just been a fantastic little success story of the popularity of the river. Um, and again, going back to because it's now clean enough to get into and enjoy. And just down from there, you have the, uh, on the other side of the river, the 42nd Street entrance to the James River Park. This is before Reedy Creek. Again, not many people know about it. And you can just head down the uh, parking lot there, head down the steps across the railroad tracks and uh, just rock up. Go find your place, go find your little island that's down there and, and just enjoy it. You know, it, it can get sunny and hot during the days, but there's a good flow of water there. So it's refreshing water. Uh, and that's, that's a fantastic thing. You know, Rob was mentioning a second ago about you know, paddling pretty much year round. We do that here in Richmond. Uh, even in the most uh, drought stricken conditions, we still have a flow and enough flow for whitewater paddling, uh, which is uh, talking about craft of choice. That's sort of my craft of choice because when you're out whitewater kayaking, you really can't think of much else. So just good clearing of the brain time out there, so you'd say. Um, and then uh, next again, trying to avoid the really popular areas. Um, taking stand up paddle boards uh, in the Great Shiplock area uh, and or Cross River over at Ankara's Landing. This area is tidal, uh, but you don't have, this time of year, you don't have a lot of powerboat traffic in that area. Uh, if it is March and April, you do because that's shad season, and, and which I love fishing in shad season because I can actually catch fish, which is awesome for me. <laughs> um, but everybody knows that. So it's, it's a sight to see. If you want to fish, it's a great time fishing, but it, it's really quite the sight to see, you know, all these people, this plethora, everybody's lining the banks, taking their canoes out, taking their power boats out. Uh, some guys have retrofitted a uh, pontoon boat. It's just a flat deck so they can go fly fishing off this. It's, it's, it's really amusing to, and, you know, a spectacle to watch this. Uh, but, but an aspect about this, being that it's whitewater enrichment, is that we do have to be very careful safety-wise. Um, you know, 
as Rob had looted up in the Balcony Falls area. There had been some incidents up there. Same has happened in Richmond this spring. We had a high water spring. People going out in the wrong craft without the knowledge. Uh, I believe on the next slide it shows we have a gauge that we um, that we use to give an idea of okay what what's the river level what is acceptable and uh, after an incident here in Richmond because of the popularity of this the local boating community has really stepped up to promote the education so we're getting professional signs made in conjunction with, and with the okay of the city of Richmond to educate people to warn people there are one or two low head dams in the area uh, that that have caused some fatalities over the years uh, but that has been you know especially a lot of the younger generation they have really stepped up to say hey we love this resource we don't want to see these problems happening uh, so you know how to educate the public so we're going to work on making some new maps that are oriented just towards whitewater paddling in richmond to help hopefully prevent uh, we'll never be able to prevent everything but you know prevent and educate uh, through you know prevent through education to uh, make it a, a pleasant experience. And, and I'm fortunate enough that I can instruct people to help get that happening, get that point across. It's a ball, it's so much fun, but if you do it safely, you're gonna wanna come back and do it again. And thus, promoting our next, our next round of river rats, our river caretakers. If somebody has fun, they're gonna wanna care for their resource. Uh, and so it's, it's everything that JRA is doing is, you know, so spot on with that. And so, so with that, you know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to pass it on to the next uh, person lower down on the James, but um, there's so much to do. Thank you all for helping keep it that way. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Greg. That was wonderful. Um, the 42nd street rocks area is, is one of my personal favorite areas. And um, I, I should have asked you this uh, at the beginning of, of the falls of the James River section. Uh, what is your your favorite paddlecraft? What is your paddlecraft of choice? It it is whitewater kayaking. Uh, well, except for on those hot days, like my son there on the boogie board, because <laughs> you're in the water a little bit more. But uh, yes, I truly do like whitewater kayaking because you really have to pay attention, and so you can't think about anything else. So it's that that time away. And, and I'm fortunate again, uh, where my house is located, I'm um, within 10 to 12 minutes of three access points. So, so I can just jump right on the river, just lickety split. Um, and uh, I have a couple different types of whitewater kayaks, uh, but uh, one for one for each river level and each each purpose. But that uh, keeps my mind occupied. So it's a it's a short vacation, even if it's just for half an hour. That's great. If uh, if anyone uh, participating in today's webinar is interested in learning how to whitewater kayak, get in contact with Greg at Chesterfield County Parks and Recreation. Thanks again, Greg. All right, so we're moving down river to our final section, uh, the Lower James River. And again, we have another expert with us this evening, uh, Emily Henson, uh, who I, I very much enjoy working with in my capacity at the James River Association. Emily, thank you for joining us. Tell us where you are joining us from and what is your paddlecraft of choice? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you, Justin, so much for including me in this webinar tonight. Um, I'm joining you guys from JRA's Williamsburg office, which is here in Colonial Historical National Park um, in Williamsburg. And um, favorite paddlecraft, I'd have to say, usually I'd say kayak, but I recently tried a, a stand-up paddleboard yoga class, which married two of my favorite things. So that might be my new favorite thing to do on the water. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the lower jeans, um, what we're really talking about is the tidal portion of the river. So from the fall line um, in Richmond to the mouth of the James River, kind of where the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel is, um, where the James empties into uh, the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so much, there's so many changes that happen in this stretch of river. Um, the water just gets increasingly salty. The river gets wider and wider until it almost, um, I think in the video he says it looks like the ocean, which is very much true sometimes. Um, uh, you know, down in Newport News, the, the river is several miles across. So paddling in the lower is just so different because, you know, you don't have to worry about navigating rapids or, or high water but you do have to take into account, you know, the, the tides, um, 
because the river is so wide, a lot of the places that I have listed on the one of the next slides are not on the river itself, but on the um, some of the little tributaries. And there's so many great little spots in the in the tidal creeks that flow into the Lower James. So um, on this map here, you can really see that the watershed gets really narrow um, in the Lower James and um, down here in Hampton Roads, it's one of the more uh, densely populated segments of the river. But despite that, there are just so many places where you can get totally lost in nature um, in the Lower James. So go to the next one. So I actually, I picked seven spots. I'm not gonna talk about every single one of them, but um, my favorite, I did try to kind of include some geographical diversity here. Um, the, my favorite spot, uh, to go paddle boarding or kayaking or canoeing has got to be the Chickahominy Riverfront Park. Um, it's right at the mouth of the Chickahominy where it flows into the James um, in James City County. You know, they rent kayaks so you don't have to have your own to enjoy the river. Um, there's an outfitter that does that paddleboard yoga that I was talking about. Um, it's also, you can see the local crew teams practicing there. Um, and if you, if you go check out um, the Chickahominy, I highly recommend that you go paddling on Gordon Creek, which is right there at, at the park. Um, I was there just a few weeks ago and the creek is just always teeming with all kinds of wildlife, osprey, bald eagles, herons, muskrat. Um, it's just a not very um, developed area in terms of there's not a lot of houses out there um, and you can just get lost in the freshwater marshes. Uh, another one that's on this list is Windsor Castle Park. So we're jumping all the way on the south side of the James to the town of Smithfield. And um, that is on Cypress Creek, which flows into the Pagan, which flows into the James. Um, and it's just a totally different experience paddling there because instead of freshwater marshes, you have um, brackish water. So totally different animal and um, plant communities um, are, my colleagues who are birders will tell me how different the birding communities are there. I don't, I can't speak to that as well. But um, this is an area where uh, you'll find oysters and uh, they have a great little kayak launch there. They rent kayaks and JRA is actually doing a shoreline project there in the next couple of months. So um, if you visit, you know, maybe after this fall, you might get to see that living shoreline project. Um, the James River National Wildlife Refuge, I like that in the, um, in the falls of the James, uh, you were talking about, you know, maybe places where people aren't visiting as much. And the James River National Wildlife Refuge, you actually need a permit to access their, um, their, their kayak launch, but um, it's definitely a good social distancing uh, kayak excursion because usually not that many people who go to the trouble of, of getting that permit. Um, and so you can, uh, it's just a beautiful Cypress, uh, Bald Cypress Creek that's there. Um, what else is on here? Uh, the, for cycling, I definitely recommend the Colonial Parkway and the Jamestown Island Loop Road for views of, of the river and the, and the tidal creeks. You can see in that second picture down there, that's on Jamestown Island. And it also connects the Capitol Trail, so you can do, you know, as long a bike ride as you want. Um, and then Chip Oak State Park, you know, if you're into fossil hunting, I think that was actually featured in the video as well from the beginning when he's looking at the shells. Um, but they have these, Chip Oaks is on the James itself in, in Surrey County, and they have these high eroding bluffs. And so it's a great spot to find, you know, shark's teeth and stuff like that. So I think we can go to the next one. Yeah. So we have a Lower James Water Trail. And it's like five pages long. <laughs> so didn't include that. But um, the Chickahominy Water Trail um, is just one I wanted to highlight because it's just a relatively undeveloped um, part of the Lower James. And this map, which I believe Justin JRA took part in creating, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll, we'll point you towards all the different places where you can access the river and also has some cool suggestions for uh, round trip paddles. You kind of have to time it with the tides, but um, people always ask me for a round trip paddle, which we don't typically do. We usually go out and turn around. So um, uh, there are some of those on the Chickahominy where you can paddle around the little 
little islands. Um, and then for the next slide, I just wanted to do a, a quick shout out for our Connect with the James program, uh, which mostly happens in the lower James. We have paddles happening in the Williamsburg and Richmond areas. Um, we have, I think here, two photos from um, Turkey Island Creek, which is where Justin holds uh, usually canoe programs. And then we have a picture from um, Powhatan Creek where JRA holds uh, kayak programs that are um, open to the public. And there is, if you guys are interested in joining, there's a listserv that you can um, sign up for that will notify you when the registration opens. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for, uh, for letting me speak with you all tonight. And uh, I look forward to answering any questions. Thank you so much, Emily. Uh, that was wonderful. The, the lower section of the James River uh, really is, is special and as equally as scenic as any other section of the river. Um, you know, down when you get closer to the Chesapeake Bay, the river becomes miles wide and, um, you know, all you can see is river. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, like Emily said, I think we're, we're ready to take on some questions. Um, I think I'll turn it back over to Sarah to see if we have any questions that have been um, inserted into the uh, chat box. Um, surprisingly, I don't see any, um, but I'm sure there's got to be some out there that, that people have. So feel free to jump in. May I jump in? Um, I've always been fascinated by, by um, Iron Gate, but I've never been there. Uh, Rob, is, is that a easily accessible place, at least to, to visit? Uh, sadly, there is a, a farm there. It's called the Head of the James Farm, and it's it's a privately owned place. I think we could potentially do some outreach to them and get a date set up, but to the general public, no, it's not a spot that you can get to unless you paddle into. Uh, however, there is a new access point on the Jackson River, which is just only about a mile or a mile and a half upriver of that point. Uh, previously, you actually had to paddle about a five to six mile stretch to get um, to that section. So it is a little bit easier to get to by boat. But sadly, unless we can call and make a special visit, uh, it's, it's hard to get to by, by land for sure. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Neil. So we actually did have a one come in from Tom. It said, um, as a fly fishing enthusiast, I'm interested to hear your input on fishing opportunities in the upper and middle sections, specifically for anglers who prefer to wade rather than fish from a boat. Yeah, that can definitely be trickier on some of our longer sections uh, to get into. And in some areas where these access points are on the middle and upper James, they're, they're wadeable right off the boat ramp. You can walk, go to these parks and wade right out into some of these areas that have rapidy sections and islandy sections just right out from the access points. Especially this time of year when you get to this water level and the water is this low in most areas of the watershed, um, you really can access a lot more spots than you, than you traditionally would have been able to. Uh, but I will say there's some great guide services that are starting to pop up up here that are utilizing both paddle craft with uh, kind of some oar rig setups on rafts um, and but also some that are getting out in jet boats to some of the harder to reach places and and able to get out to some more spots in in one day. Um, but that's something that you just want to definitely watch out for with the wading as far as water levels. Um, just like Greg showed that that beautiful river gauge that uh, we all live and die by those things. We have them scattered up and down the James River from Buckhannon to uh, just above here in Lynchburg and there's also at Bend Creek and Scottsville all the way down the James. Those are things you really want to look at while you're, while you're doing some of that. But there is one place in particular at the Seven Islands that I will mention for wading and fly fishing if you've never been there is the Hardware River Wildlife Management Area. Uh, it's about six miles east of Scottsville um, and it really does pop you right out where the Hard River, Hardware River comes in uh, to the James. And there's a big set of islands just as soon as you're at that boat ramp. But that really is the head of the seven islands. And it, again, at this water level, very weightable. Uh, but just be careful with those waders out there uh, for sure. But this time of year, you might not have to wear them. Just a pair of swimming trunks would, that would do the trick. And Kim is a big fly fisherman too. Kim might have a, some of his secret spots that he wants to uh, 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 share with us is where he, he might go. <laughs> I was just, I just sent a note to Tom telling him I'd take him. Um, 
it, they're hard to get to, but I tell you, below the Bedford Dam, if you can get in there, it's, it's an incredible place. Uh, but but you, it's hard to get to. You've either got to trespass on the railroad track or paddle over and then climb over the dam. Um, but it's a great it's a great place. I was talking to a fellow a couple of weeks ago, or actually a couple of months ago, who said he was down there fishing and and he was standing in the water and saw a, a rainbow trout, a um, a muskie, and a smallmouth all in the same place. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's pretty special. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty special. Yeah. And that's in the James itself. Yeah, I mean, there are tales of, of, of rainbows coming out of uh, probably out of Rocky Row Run where they stock it. Yeah, um, I was going to say Rocky Row Run or potentially out of the Maury from where they stock it up on the South River and on our Little Irish Creek. Yeah. Huh. They'll hang in there for a while. They're probably not there right now, but they might be. It, that's the yeah, coldest water that they can find. In a deep hole, maybe. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? One question I was going to pose, Justin, is with COVID, how are people handling shuttles and and just other considerations to think through um, for recreating on the river? It's a great question. Um, Rob, do you want to take that with your James Root Adventures hat on? Yeah, yeah, we've we have been very uh, leery to jump into that game because getting a lot of people in and out of one vehicle uh, from different groups, different areas of the, the, of the state and, and sometimes the country, it can be problematic and we want to make sure that we're safe about doing such. Here are our operations and I know lots of liveries uh, in and around the watershed are doing a lot of their operations just strictly outside. So we really don't uh, have any customers coming inside. We keep that good distance as we're out there. But just as the private paddler, it, it can be very tricky um, to do so. And, and even when we do have downriver trips here, we've prescribed people to bring two vehicles. Um, and in that, you hope that those two vehicles are coming from the same household unit. So it's people that aren't uh, too badly mixing. Uh, but again, you know, it, it does come down to your own discretion uh, at the end of the day at this point. Uh, and it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough pill to swallow um, to, to just have, the, have yourself be excluded from the river for such a, a simple thing, but it's a real thing and it's things that we need to be taking precautions for uh, and making sure that we're all doing the right things in that end. But, uh, you know, a good, I think a part of the strategy has been a lot of folks have spent a lot of time together with friends and family. Um, and if you have that, uh, that access to that close friend group that you may have been in closer touch with, uh, you can maybe get some shuttles pulled off. And in the Richmond area, it's not too bad. You guys can uh, can maybe catch a, some other type of transit or ride your bicycle to get places. And in areas where we have uh, uh, biking trails, some of that is an option here as well for some of our stretches. But um, it's a challenge that we don't have all the answers to yet, for sure. And as, as the days and months go on, we'll, we'll hopefully learn more and get more guidance uh, to, to make sure we can keep doing these fun things out on the river, uh, but responsible, for sure. Rob, you are, you are right. In Richmond, uh, there's been a, a, a big uptick in bike shuttling. So I, I know I've, I've done it a couple times myself. Um, some of the, you know, some of the younger generation, they'll, they'll run uh, their shuttles because it's only about two and a half, three mile, two and a half to three mile run. Uh, but the bike shuttling has become quite popular here in town. Um, and then again, on the shorter Shorter stretches, a lot of people just do the back of the pickup truck just for that reason, just because of the social distancing. Um, I believe that the raft companies have really um, spaced out people on their buses. They're not packing the buses like they used to, um, and the windows are open. Um, but but that, that still is an issue. I know for our programs, we ask that if we are doing a program that uh, is in need of a shuttle, we ask that people shuttle themselves. So they'll have their own two vehicles. Um, and, and we just try to do group programs like that with, you know, either close friends or family uh, for those. So we've, we've curtailed our numbers on um, classes where we actually have uh, shuttles that are needed. Um, but yeah, biking, biking and running have gotten quite popular here, here in town. Emily, can you uh, touch on some of the safety protocols we've implemented for our connect with the James programs? Yeah, so I uh, down here we originally did have some shuttle programs that we ended up turning into programs that didn't require shuttles, so we could avoid that whole thing. Just instead of starting in one place, ending at the other, starting and ending at the same location. Um, we've also, since a lot of our programs are in kayaks instead of canoes, and and um, 
uh, you know, double tandem kayaks tend to seat people pretty close together. We're avoiding using tandem kayaks unless um, folks are from the same household. Um, and then, you know, staff are, are wearing masks when we're on land and we're also sanitizing the equipment. Um, James City County actually uh, partners with us to um, put these programs on. So we use their equipment and they've been helping us um, sanitize the rental equipment between uses. Thank you for those answers and great question, Bill. It's a, it's a whole new world for outfitters. Uh, we did have, I think, one more question that we have time for, and um, it is, are there any paddling groups that are not outfitters that go out in the middle and lower James? Great question. Um, I will say that on the middle James, and Rob, feel free to chime in, you too, Greg, the Old Dominion Smallmouth Club, um, they're a fishing group, um, but they they do paddle the, the middle James um, pretty frequently, um, from what I understand. Um, Greg or Emily, do you have any insight? Um, yeah, we had, there's one Facebook group uh, called the River City Paddle Dogs. Uh, and they're primarily flatwater paddlers, uh, you know, with, with kayaks. Um, and it seems like most, uh, most weekends they have a, an organized trip, um, you know, loosely organized trip. Uh, going out somewhere. Uh, again, they're, they're flat waters sit on top or just recreational boats, um, but, but on, the, um, on the lower and up on the middle part of the James. And they're a pretty um, open group, a very welcoming group, I should say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about in your, your neck of the woods, Emily? Hmm. Yeah, a lot of the kayaking groups that I've run into are like um, specific to like a neighborhood, you know, so they're, they're super regional. Um, I, there must be, especially as you get down to like Hampton and, and Norfolk, but I'm, there's none that come to mind for me that aren't like outfitters or rentals. Yeah. There, there's a new group I, I came across, it's called Virginia Kayaking. I think they're a little bit more up in the Northern Virginia area, but not exclusive to that. So uh, again, uh, it's Facebook page, uh, Virginia Kayaking. Is, is another one to, uh, to look into. Great. From others, you got the coastal canoeists uh, out there a little bit also as well. And here in the Middle James, we have another group as well as the upper, the float fishermen of Virginia. Again, a very inclusive group, not just a fishing group, very much a, a all around paddling group. Um, Blue Ridge River Runners is another group here uh, out of Lynchburg. And also a great group on Facebook is just paddlers of the 434-540 area code. Um, some very, very skilled paddlers are part of that group and always, always trying to get folks out and encourage uh, people who might be feeling lazy on a Saturday morning to go and grab your boat. Come on out. Let's have some fun. Thank you for this. Answer. Do we have any more questions? Thank you all so much for participating. I will, uh, Sarah, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you. Okay, thanks, Justin. And thank you everybody for your great questions and your commentary. Um, I just thought it was super awesome to learn all about these river spots. And um, before we, we wrap up, I just wanted to put a, um, a plug in here for bajameschanger.org be online. Um, it just offers great ways to become more involved with JRA, including how to follow us on social media, using the Action Network. Um, you can receive information about the latest river policy issues. You can invest in the protection of the James by making a contribution and take um, steps to a cleaner river by joining our River Hero Home program as well. So be sure to check that out. And, um, let me actually, I need to share my screen because I did want to do a quick poll. Um, just kind of getting your overall feedback really quick. Um, your answers are completely anonymous and we really appreciate it. Um, so give me one sec. And it should launch now. 
So please just take a moment to answer. And I'll just do a couple more seconds. All right, well, thank you all for participating in that. And um, just wanna say thank you to everybody for joining us. Shout out to our program staff, Justin, Rob, and Emily for leading the webinar and our guest speaker, Greg, for his time and insights. Um, a follow-up email that includes a recording of today's webinar, ways to connect and support with us, um, and a link to a quick evaluation survey will be sent after the webinar. The survey only takes about two minutes, and we'd really appreciate your opinion um, as we aim to improve future webinars. And I can also include that link in the chat box. Um, also stay tuned for more information about other future webinars coming soon. And just thank you again for, for everyone participating, and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Sarah. I'll see everyone on the river sometime soon. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs>